Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of my playthrough of Blood and Wine. Thank you for joining me again. We're here in what is now Geralt's estate in Corvo Bianco. And we need to decide what we're going to do in this episode. I think what I'm going to do first is we are going to run over here to the Cockatrice Inn and um, buy these uh, Gwent cards that we didn't buy before. They're right over here. Um... So I'm going to just go ahead and buy those cards, and I think that there's actually somebody that we could play Gwent in uh, that place. So let's go ahead and run outside and go over to the uh, fast travel point. And we'll just fast travel over there. We could run over there, but, you know, why do that? We've got a fast travel point here. We've got a fast travel point there. Uh, actually, that is the inn over there. We could see it from here. Um... So, I don't know, maybe it is silly to fast travel, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. Just fast travel over there real quick. We'll go in, we'll buy some cards, we'll play a little Gwent, and then uh, we'll move on from there. So, if I can remember how to get in this place. What? With no lights, brave enough? Of course we have, but bravery is not enough against the beast. It wields dark powers. That calls for a Witcher. That's right. Okay, here is the innkeep over here. Greetings. What do you need? Well, show me what you got. Show me what you got in stock. And he's got these cards here. He's got an Arrakis card. He's got an Ekamara card. And he's got a Flutter card. None of those are Skellige cards. I guess we just need to uh, win the Skellige cards from players. So we're going to try to do that right now. Not likely to taste your famous fisherman's chowder. So maybe we could play some Gwent. He's like, oh yeah, I do love me some Gwent. Uh, let's just uh, stick with Skoyatel. See how that goes. Let him go first. He is playing the Skellige, Skellige deck. We've got a decoy here. Uh, we got like, this great card. This is one of my favorites. A spy card that gives the opponent zero points. Uh, we got a healer here who lets us draw a card out of our deck. We've got a muster card here. This is just a regular old card. This is just a regular old card. This is also one of my favorite cards. And then we have a couple hero cards. I'm going to go ahead with this. I feel, feel okay with this. So we're still learning the Skellige deck. We, uh, we've played a couple people who use the Skellige deck and we've seen what kind of stuff you can do with it. Let us, uh, let's see, what's his ability? I always like to know that. Shuffles all cards from each player's graveyard back into their decks. That is a weird ability. I don't know how I feel about that. But let's just go ahead and start off with this card here. Alright, so he's also got the Mysterious Elf card. So he's going to draw two cards. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Two can play at that game. Alright, we got the Dandelion card. And maybe this one. Alright, well, he's got just a regular old ship up here worth six points that could... Uh, what is that called? Tight bond with another card. Let's see if this guy has anybody he could muster with. And he does. Nice. And let's see if he scorches me. No, he's just going to play a Geralt card. Okay. A lot of points flying around here early in the game. I'm actually afraid to throw this. That would put a lot of points in this front row that he could easily dismiss. Either by a frozen card or uh, he could throw this, um, if he has this card, the villain Tretenmirth card. Could do a lot of damage to me. So we'll just throw him out and put him here in this this row. There's the Scorch. He got rid of two of my sixes and one of his. Not sure how I feel about that. Threw this into my graveyard. Neither one of those cards are all that great, really. Hmm. 19 to 15. I've got eight cards. He's got seven.
I don't know. Let's throw this out there. Okay. He's gonna draw a card out of his deck, and if he draws Scorch... Okay, I guess he... Could he not draw Scorch? That would have been a good card for him to draw. It would have gotten rid of all three of those. So I'm not really sure about his choice there. Well... Uh, I don't really see any reason to draw either one of those cards out of the deck. I'm not going to play this card yet, because he doesn't have anything here worth scorching. Like I said, I'm afraid to play this, but if I don't play this now, I don't know when I'll play it, so... Let's go ahead and throw it out there. But that may have been a mistake. He's let's see what he does. And there it is, the card I was afraid of. Sure enough. Well, that hurt a lot. I was afraid that exactly that was going to happen, and it did. 39 to 12. I don't know if there's much I could do here. I mean, if I threw out my highest card, it'd only get me up to 27. It's gonna be hard to catch up with him. Um, trying to decide if I just want to cut my losses and move on to the next round. I can throw out a decoy, take this card back. Let's do this. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Okay. So you kind of... Interesting, what did that card do? It didn't seem like it did anything. As a matter of fact, I know it didn't. This card is supposed to do something to, like, bear cards. Trigger transformation of all Berserker cards in the same row. He had no Berserker cards, so he just totally wasted that. So I'm going to go ahead and pass here. Let him win this round. I have a 6-4 to four card advantage. Now i got to win the next two hands. Let's see if he does anything. Well, he didn't play a card. Okay. So he's only got four cards. And he passes. So he's, he's willing to allow me to win this hand. Which I find very odd. Uh, what do I want to throw out? I mean, this is only worth two points. Yeah, we could do that. Then we could pull him back out again. Let's just throw this out. And I will win this hand. Okay, he made that very easy on me. Let's see what happens here. Five cards to four. What was that? Some kind of Skellige ability was triggered? I, I don't know what the, I don't know why he got to draw two cards. He lost. He lost that hand. Why did he get to do an ability? Hmm. I'm not real sure I understand that at all. Well, I'm just gonna throw everything I've got out there because I need to win this hand. That's a pretty good card right there. And... Okay, then. Alright. Well, say goodbye to those. Because I'm going to throw this out. It's going to get rid of both of those cards. See you later. Bye. Now what's he going to do? Uh, okay, he's going to double this card. Alright, not bad. Not bad. Let's just go ahead and throw this out. Tie game, two cards apiece. It's any oh man, he's got a muster card. Oh, ouchie. That was a lot of points right there, man. That was a lot of points right there. Huh. Well, I've got these two cards left. I throw this card out, it's gonna let me pull a card out of my deck. I won't be able to pull out any special cards, unfortunately. Gosh. I don't really have anything all that great. There's no sense in pulling these guys back out because there's nobody for them to muster with. I could pull him back out. It'll double him. That might be my best bet. Because that'll actually give me nine more points. And I don't have anything else in here that's going to give me nine points. So let's throw this out. We'll pull out Dandelion. 
and double that card. And he's got no cards left. Okay, well we won. <laughs> that was close, man. <laughs> that was close. That's weird, I thought he had two cards left. I guess I lost track of what he was doing. I, th I really thought he had two more. Oh well, we win. And we're gonna get a Skellige card from him. Oh, it's like he pushed us away. We got our 50 crowns, and we get a Clan Drummond Shield Maiden. Alright, cool. Okay. Oh, I thank you. Okay, let us decide what we are going to do now. Let's look at the map. We're up here at the Cockatrice Inn. There's a couple of question marks around. Nothing too terribly exciting. Uh, since we're here, I don't know. What do you say we run down here, then to here, and then to here, and we'll look at this and see if we get any new uh, quests from there. How's that sounds? I think it sounds all right. So which side of the river do I want to be on? I want to be on... I want to turn left. Ugh, during the tourney. One night got stuck. Oh, I already heard that one. So I already heard that story. Alright. We are going to run over here. It's actually further than I thought it was going to be, so let's call Roach. Hey, Roach. Let's go. So this is a part of the world we haven't visited yet. Flat. Not real flat. Slightly rolling hills right here by the Something's river. Not right. Something's not right, says Geralt. Yeah, so is he talking about... I guess this is what he's talking about right here. Let's uh, hop off of Vel Roach here and walk over here. There's some enemies over here. I'm not sure what they are. Kind of skulking around. It looks like a... I guess that could be a panther, huh? Let's get our... Um, Igni ready. Oh, Bargusts. Guarded treasure. Well, it's weird that he would say something's not right about a guarded treasure. It's... um. Oh, look at this dead body hanging here. Damn, you're a man. Oh. All right, Bargusts. Whoa, look at the damage we're doing. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. So, in the last episode, uh, when I was fighting those um, arachnomorphs, I was I kept talking about how I felt like I was attacking really fast, and I was like, "Wow, where'd that come from?" didn't cross my mind that that's probably the whirl skill or ability that we have now. I was expecting the whirl to, I don't know, look like Geralt was whirling around with a sword. It doesn't quite look like that, but we are certainly um, swinging a lot faster, which is awesome. A lot more DPS, that's for sure. Look at this. The amount of critical damage we're doing to that thing. Holy cow. A lot of damage. Oh, there's still another one over here, unfortunately. Something's making a weird sound over here, too. Okay. Is it just the Bargusts themselves that are making that sound? I guess so, because I don't hear the sound anymore. Well, let's go over here and see what's up with this guy who hanged himself. What's up, dude? Nell Pois farewell letter. Pwa Pora? I don't know how to pronounce that. Neil's farewell letter. Let's read it. Now I know life is perfect. Life is excellent. Life is full of magic, beauty, possibility, and drama, and surprises, numerous surprises. You, father, are also in for a surprise. You did not wish for your son to become an actor. You chose another home for him, the army. 
so your son has a surprise for you. His feet will never touch the ground again. He will never again taste life's beauty. And you, father, soon you must reach up to your son's hanging corpse and take the sack full of crowns for which you sold his life to butchers. Neil Bore. Neil, my goodness, why so dramatic? Well, that was sad. It's weird though how he shows up. He showed up in all red, like he was going to be a quest, but uh, just a sad, sad story. The world of The Witcher is full of them, full of sad, sad stories. Let's eat a little bit of food here. And apparently, shoot Roach with a crossbow. All right, let's look at our map, and uh, we'll travel on down to the next undiscovered location. Let's go, Roach. Oh, hello. Some kind of castle or something down here. But, uh, it's not where we're going right now. It's supposed to be going over here. I passed it up. What have we here? Hidden treasure. Oh, those drowners down there? They don't like fire. What's up, y'all? Oh, ouch. They hit hard. Next. Nice. I love the way those things look, man, with that bright white, uh, red uh, um, fins on them. I think it's really cool. I like it. Loot. This guy didn't leave anything for us to loot. What's that? I'm getting ripped off, man. So they were over here, looting this body, eating it maybe. Letter to Pascal Pellissier and a small key. My darling Pascal. I trust this missive finds you in good health. As you know, my affections for you are powerful beyond all measure, and I yearn for you to become my husband with all my being. Soon we shall stand together at the marital altar, but I hope you understand this must be a ceremony to make the Duquesa herself green with envy. Do not think this an admonishment in any way, my dear. But we both know your modest soldier's wage will not allow us to put on the extravagant ball which we both deserve. But do not be sad. I have found a solution to our little problem. You surely know about the shipwreck on the bottom of the Sans Retour, but I doubt you know the full story of how it came to be there. Back in the time of Duke Raymond, one of the wealthiest men in the duchy, Gail Sask, decided to hold a ball in the middle of the river. And what a ball it was beautifully coif quaffed beautifully quaffed grand dames elegant gentlemen in white shirts and striking doubles i don't know uh gail apparently took a crate of jewelry aboard and changed rings multiple times to impress all with his wealth the event was in full swing when suddenly a violent storm rolled in the wind snapped the masts and capsized the vessel all the wealthy guests, draped in gold and jewels, sank to the bottom in a flash. This tragic story might yet have a happy ending, however, for I have obtained the key to Galsask's chest. I imagine you now see why our future prosperity is within easy reach. After all, the drowned dead do not need diamonds, am I not right? Loving you more than life itself, Bella de Gunnis. Well, you suck, Bella de Gunnis. Look what happened. Yeah, the Black Widow indeed. New quest here. While traversing the boggy flood plains along the Sands Retour, Geralt almost tripped over the corpse of a drowned man washed up on the bank. He searched the man's bloated remains and found a letter that revealed a bit about the deceased. The youth had been sent to the river to fish out a treasure from a boat that had gone to the bottom years before. Interestingly, Geralt had already happened on another wretch, much like, much like this one. As it was, both had been sent to a certain death by one Bella de Gunnis. I thought her name sounded familiar. The unfortunate souls would do no more diving. 
Geralt decided to look for the chest full of valuables himself. Is it nearby? Why, yes it is. I guess we're going for a bit of a swim, aren't we? Loot this stuff first. Get a little bit, a little bit. Cucumber. Alright, let's go for a swim. And see if we can't find the shipwreck. Well, there's something swimming around down there. Something no good for sure. Night is coming on. Well, looking with my Witcher senses, but uh, nothing's jumping out at me. All right, come on, Geralt. Um, well, there's an enemy down there. Could it be down in this ravine? Probably. Well, there's something down here. Nothing red, though. Oh, there it is. There's something red. You need to pick up the pace, Geralt. A little bit of Florins. Florins. Come on, Geralt. Get over there. All right, we got it. Was that it? Okay, we completed the quest. I don't even know what was in that thing. I picked it up so quick because I was worried I was going to drown. But I'm sure it was great. Whatever it was. Look at the sky over there. Holy cow, look at that. Beautiful colors. Sheesh. Alright, which way am I going now? Let's go back over here to... Roach. And we'll ride on to the next location. So, we completed a quest quite quickly. Um, could always see if we could find the quest here. It's called Black Widow. See if there's any final text that may be told about what was in the box since I opened it up so quickly. Oh. Uh, it's not there. Yeah, I haven't had any luck. I, I guess it was a treasure hunt, maybe. I don't know, maybe it wasn't. But I haven't had any luck finding anything down here. It's down towards the bottom of the list. I don't know why. I'm just looking at this icon right here for red ones. Um, and I guess maybe that's the wrong thing to look for. See, the ones from Hearts of, the Stone, Hearts of Stone were blue. Ones from the main game were white. So I assume that the things from this DLC would be red, but they're not. I don't know why. Oh well, whatever. Swim back here. Just one of those little side quests. Another person who was sent to his death basically by that Bella de Gunnis person. She's a... Uh, Black Widow I'd say is a nice name for her. Alright, where are we going now? Let's go ahead and ride here to this uh, notice board and see Run, Roach. what new quests we could find. This little little village here, kind of cute. Flovive. Stay here, Roach. I don't know if there'll be any new quests for us here. Here we go. Notice board. Anyone want some rocks? I have a wagon load of crushed volcanic tuff for sale. We dug out a cellar and got no use for all this rubble. Maybe someone from the Bleshur Valley would be interested? You could build something with it, or with a bit of ingenuity, turn it into a mud bath. No better cure for lower back pain than a dip in tough. If interested, ask for Master Matt at Tufo. Looks like they got a little bit of their markup language screw up there. 
All right, announcement. I played the loot, and I'm looking for... S oh, I play the loot, and I'm looking for someone who plays the ocarina. I am confident that with your power, with our powers combined, we shall be the toast of every tavern in Beauclair, or perhaps even in all of Toussaint, Mark Bloom. Rafters wanted. I'm hiring rafters to float logs from the Caraberta woods down the river. Stable employment, not seasonal. I pay better than the competition. Ask for barge master Henri Paltec and Flovive. Help wanted immediately females only. Ready work for a young, healthy female, preferably from the countryside. Important, candidates must have red hair and freckles, preferably all over. Uh-huh. Pleasant and easy work, flexible hours, good pay. Employment is temporary with a chance at something more permanent. Applications, preferably including a miniature portrait, can be submitted at the Bell of Beauclair near the ports. Sounds a little fishy, doesn't it? Well, this looks official. Contract, the monster of Tufo. I hereby announce the following. The vineyard known as Tufo, which is counted among my possessions and is famed throughout all the world for the superb melon blanc it produces, is beset by some monstrosity. Any knight who tracks the beast down and slays it will not only prove his honor, but also earn a reward of not insignificant size. Therefore, hear my call, all brave and val valorous men of Toussaint, and make haste to Tufo to converse with the undersigned about the contract. M. de Barbeau. And contract, mysterious plummeting cattle. Urgently needed, specialist used to the strange and extraordinary. Must be fast and reliable. Sorcerer, druid, or witcher preferred. Problem involves cattle, sick. What is cattle spelled wrong? Falling out of sky at night and must be cleared up fast. I guess he's saying, believe it or not, it really is cattle. Work must resume at quarry soon as we're up against tight deadlines. For details, see foreman of Ar Ardais Ardaiso Quarry. Well, we probably got a couple of quests there. Meow, meow, meow. Contract, the monster of Tufu. Is that not a new quest? There it is, the monster, the, the Tufu monster. And... Contract, bovine blues. We got two new quests from that notice board. Are they both Witcher contracts? Contract Bovine Blues. A Witcher's life is never dull. If there ever comes a point when he's had his fill of cockatrices, strigas, or neckers, he can always count on the world throwing something unusual in his path. As was the case on this occasion, when a bovine crashed to the ground from the sky, landing right on top of a quarry worker. At last, here was a contract that would surely tear the Witcher free of the fetters of the quotidian that so often held him. All right, where's this quest at? It is not far. We may run up there and do that quest. Why not? And then we picked up another quest, the Tufo Monster. Whoa, this is a level 48. Yikes. Customs in Toussaint differ markedly from those observed in the north. The fashions differ. Folk drink wine instead of rye, vodka, beer, or mead, and the women are generally more amorous while men are more attentive to their own appearance. It is quite likely the two latter issues are linked. There is one custom, however, that remains unchanged both south and north of, of the Yoruga. Namely, faced by a monster problem, folk post a notice on a notice board in which notice they promise to pay a reward, and then they pray a wish or happens by and reads it. The owner of the Tufo vineyard did just the, just as this custom ordains, and as it happened, Geralt was the one to find his notes. A lot of curiosity. Let's see where it is on the map. Oh boy, it's also up there. Crap. Ugh, I'm not really interested in taking on that quest right now. It's a level 48, and I'm only level 42. Hmm. Interesting how these two quests are... Uh, well, actually, no, they're not. This one's over here, and this one's here. Crap. Well, uh, let's go to this innkeep and see if they're selling Gwent cards, and maybe we could play them Gwent and get another Gwent card. Lots of cats here. That's not the inn. Let's 
So I was walking when the clock strikes six, you know ladies start to work their up. lips. Mm. Fatigue overwhelmed me, so mm. I lay down for a nap in a haystack. Mm. Then, out of the blue, mm. the, star, the field, it all Long started this. shaking, oh, lady. dancing about, you kiss? as if a hundred demons were marching underground. Sure. Mm. You were a few bottles in, your head started spinning. It was as real as you or I. I tell you, I swear it on Leviodas lap, on the good tome. Okay. Got a story. The covetous shall be cast into the all-consuming fire. The mighty shall fall from their high purchase. And the intemperate the intemperate shall draw. Okay, read. The Barrel and Bung Inn. What a charming name. Well, hello. Greetings, sir. What is it you need? Well... I had wine on my mind all day. Mm -hmm. What kind? Red? White? Rosé? Dry? Semi-dry? Sweet? How heavy? What appellation? Mm, I'll need to think about it. Yeah, you think about it. Tell me something about the area. Tell me something about the area, would you? Hmm, what's there to tell? That the master of these lands, Monsieur de Bourbeau, is the greatest buffoon in all Tucson? Really? Hmm, thanks. Keep an eye out in that case. Let's see if she's selling any cards. Show me what you got behind the counter. Uh, she is not selling any cards. What is this? Herb toast. It looks delicious. Hey, let's play her Gwent. Gwent. See if we could win another Skellige card around. from her. Uh, let's switch to... What do I want to do? Uh, gosh. I'm trying to remember what... What... What what uh, deck I was playing when I lost recently. It may very well have been monsters. Um, yeah, I'll have to come in here and take a look at my deck at some point and really kind of flesh it out a bit. Let's just do Northern Realms. Oh, well, she's also Northern Realms. Interesting. So maybe we won't get a Skellige card from her. Commander's Horn... We got the taller card. That's a pretty good spy card right there. That's actually, this is probably actually my favorite spy card, even more so than the Mysterious Elf, because this is just a regular card, which means that I could draw it out of my graveyard, whereas you can't with the Mysterious Elf. Uh, this guy's not really worth a whole lot on his own. This guy lets me draw a card out. Eh, this is a good card, good card, good card, good card, good card. So, I'm not really interested in keeping this card. Let's see what else we get. And I got the exact same card, so I'm going to draw again. And I got another spy card. Okay, that's cool. Let's see what happens. Okay, so she's going to throw out a taller card right off. Get two extra cards. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Okay, ooh, we got the mysterious health. Okay, so that was dumb. I don't know, man. The Gwent AI is not that bright, I don't feel like. Why in the world would you waste your ability to double this card, of all things? I want to throw this out and get myself two more cards. Alright, opponent. What you got? Alright. Throwing out good old Kira. I've got so many cards now, I'm not even sure what I want to do. What's my special ability? My special ability... Clears any weather effects. Alright, well, that's kind of nice to have up your sleeve, right? Uh, I don't know. Let's just go in the front here. Okay. Well, now he's going to double that row as well. Okay. Good for you. Um. Let's, uh, I don't know. Throw something back here. 
don't really have much of a strategy right now, I don't feel like. I have a lot of special cards. But in the first round, I like to use as many cards as I can that I can pull out again in the next round because I've got this card. I've got this card that'll allow me to pull cards out of here. So I don't want to use these cards right now because I can't pull them out. So we'll just go ahead and even though none of these cards are all that great, I'll go ahead and throw these out. I mean, I just mean they're just not special. So it looks like we're going to just play this game where... We're um, just going to throw out cards. Hmm, not really sure how I want to do this. I'm tempted to throw this out just to get more cards. It's got so many more points than me right now. Should I just punt? And, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's see if this is a dumb idea. Let's see, so I could throw my decoy out and take this card back. That might be funny. Yeah, good. oh brother, why are you wasting that card? Um, I could throw this card out now and get two more points. Two more cards. Why not? It's a lot of cards. <laughs> I'm just making their use all of her cards, man. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this card out now, get some more cards. <laughs> Who cares? I'll give her more points, big deal. And she finally passes. Okay, well. We are going to go ahead and pass as well. She'll win that round, but we knew that from the start. 12 cards to 4. Uh, so she drew an extra card. So that's a pretty good card right there. So I'm just going to start throwing out cards here. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let's just let's do the same thing again. Um... Let's just kind of start with... See, these are the cards that I have in my graveyard. Nothing too exciting. But I could throw a bunch of stuff in this back row and then use my commander's horn on it. I don't think I'm going to need to, though. Okay, that's going to allow her to draw a card out of her deck. And she did a spy card. Okay, that gave her some extra cards. Interesting. Uh, we're gonna stick here in the back. And she passes. Okay. Well. Alright. Um, not real sure where she's going with that. But I just need eight points. And so I'll throw this out. And we win this round. Okay, nine cards to five, ten cards to five, and now we just start, throw, start throwing out cards. Yep, just throwing out cards, that's it, just card, card, card. Feeling pretty good. I don't even have to do anything special. She's got three cards. Alright. That card's not going to do anything. Except give her six points, obviously. Six cards to two. Uh, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> 
That's a pretty good sign. Makes me feel like she doesn't really have any cards left, any good cards. And her last card will be... Nothing. She passes. Alright, so we win. That was pretty easy. Okay, let's see what card we get from her. Get our 50 crowns. And we got a Ceres card. Okay, I'll find the beast. So the card that we picked up, this Saris card, I'm kind of curious, is it a um, Skellige card? It is. Cool. Wow, it's a good card too. Nice. Alright. Alright, so we're done here in this little town. Let's bring up our map. Let's go ahead and run up here to this question mark, and then we'll move on from there after that. It's not too far away, so we'll just run up there on foot. So, new marker, Flovive. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Once upon a time, a plague of frogs visited the Sans Retour Marsh. Duchess Edamarta declared a prize would be given to whomever freed the land of these accursed amphibians. Yet neither the knights errant nor the druids nor anyone else proved up to the task until a poor raftsman named Flovive figured out a way. He serenaded the frogs with his violin and they, entranced by his melody, followed him out of the duchy. In memory of this event, the settlement where Toussaint's raftsmen dwell bears his name. So he's basically the Pied Piper of Toussaint. So I like how you can see the stars at night. That is pretty cool. Collapsed building. Whoa. Foundations probably caved in. Literally undermined. Okay, well, we have um, stumbled across one of the uh, treasure hunts for the Ursine gear. Um, this one right here got checked off. Find the place where the Witcher completed his contract. Well, we're here. Why don't we uh, go ahead and explore the ruined building, you know? That way we don't have to come back. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Can we go into the building? We can. Much to my surprise. Another door over here. But it is locked. Kind of hard to walk around in here. Our very close quarters. So, I'm exploring the building. Ooh, look at this. Clear the rubble using the Ard sign. I can do that. Anything over here? Just looking. All right, well, let's bring up our Ard. Kablooey. Uh, hello, you're supposed to uh, cast your Ard, Geralt. All right, now we're back to exploring the ruined building. Uh, here's a little something we could loot here. Journeyman's Weapon Repair Kit. I'll take it. Guess this is just all the stuff that was blocking the entrance. Here's something that looks interesting. Well, here's a uh, journal from Shari... Shiriti? I don't know. Gontran de Tufo's journal. And then uh, the diagram for this Grandmaster Ursine Silver Sword, Ursine Armor, and Ursine Gauntlets. Okay, that's cool. Let's read the uh, owner's notes. 17 May 1243. Finally, a response to my notice. A witcher, big as a mountain and bearded as a dwarf. He asked about the contract, then said he'd take it for about as much coin as we've set aside for Fifi's dowry. That's some nerve, but I had no other choice. I had to agree. 18 May. The witcher claims the problems are caused by sub some subterranean monster. He searched the area and found an entrance to a complex of caves by a stream in the Marcescent Forest. Probably Marchescent, I don't know. He plans to enter through it tomorrow. 20 May. The Witcher hasn't returned. 
Some elf from the city ask about him. Now that's some nerve, giving our address to non-humans. 27th May. Enough of this. I'll never hire a witcher again. It will soon be ten days since he took his retainer and disappeared. I plan to sell the things he left behind to recover at least a portion of my losses. Too bad he mostly just left scraps with scribblings that no one will want to purchase. Well, the beast the witcher was hunting doesn't seem like he killed it. Gotta keep my eyes peeled. Oh great, so now we need to find the entrance to the underground cave. Do I have to do that? What if I don't want to? What if I don't want to do that? Oh, well, what are you doing, game? Yeah, this is the stuff that was just knocked out with the ard. Picking it up. Loot. 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 Okay. Let's uh, light a fire. Oh, a wraith! Uh, swing, Geralt. Oh, I love it. Come out here, Wraith. Step into my circle. Step into my beautiful purple circle. Come on. Come on, Wraith. No, no, no. Don't be like that. All right, fine. I'll fight you in here. Uh, my ear... My, my spell didn't go. Oh, man. I like this new Geralt. Besotted Clerk's Journal. I've decided I shall ask her tomorrow. A man only lives once. We agreed to meet at our usual place at noon. Clarissa has asked for a half day off, and I'll sneak away from the chancellery. That old fogey of a supervisor will never notice I'm missing. And even if he did, so what? I'm young, I'll find other work. Although, if Clarissa found out I'd lost my job, she might not agree. I'd have proposed to her ages ago were I not aware how much she fears a life of poverty. She's never said as much, but I can see it worries her. But what are we waiting for? Together we shall live more economically than apart, and finally we shall not have constantly to scheme up ways to meet here. I wanted to invite her to dine at the best eatery in all of Beauclair. So many times I have imagined what it would be like. Waiters decked out in golden livery would bring us foie gras, and sorbets. Clarissa would sit on a satin cushion, a raven black crown of hair on her head, and looking beautiful, the most beautiful woman in all the room. Then I would pull out a diamond ring. But the truth is, I shall never be able to afford all that, not even if Clarissa were to insist a ring of simple silver would be enough for her, and we'd be better off spending that coin to buy a house in Hauteville, where we could open up a shop and she could sell hats. Thus I shall propose to her tomorrow, in the abandoned wine cave which serves as our meeting place, our cozy sanctuary where we have spent so many pleasant hours together. She never complained that our only romantic moments have been spent surrounded by cobwebs and old barrels of wine. But tomorrow marks the end of all that. Once we are wed, I will carry her across my threshold. It will be eight it will be tight quarters, but there will be room enough for a bed, and there will be no cobwebs. I've only a simple copper ring for her, with a red glass jewel of the cheapest sort, but I promise in a year's time I will exchange it for a silver one, with an amethyst, or maybe even a ruby. Oh, Clarissa, tomorrow cannot come soon enough. I think I shall not be able to fall asleep tonight. So, was he, were he and Clar Clar Clarissa the wraiths? Well, there's a body there. I guess that's uh, probably Clarissa sad. That is sad. Come on, loot it. Loot! A mug in ashes. Uh, all kinds of stuff in here to loot. Oh. I think there was a piece of paper in there, but um, it didn't show up as a is a new thing. Notes. 
Is that what I picked up? A note? Let's see if I can find what I picked up. Hmm. Uh, boy, it's hard to say. Note. It just says note. It's not really something I can read. Note. Alright. Okay. I don't know. Get a fire going in here. So... We're still looking for the entrance to the underground cave. And it looks like it's actually pointing me out of here. It's not... Back here anywhere. That's the way we came in, isn't it? So where are you pointing me to, game? You would think that there was something in here. You'd see it show up in red. So do I need to leave this cave and go into a different cave? I don't know, let's go see. Oh, okay. This is in a different location entirely. Ah, uh, okay. Different location entirely. Uh, hmm. Well, uh, not sure if I want to go there right now. I'm going to end this episode here anyway. When we come back next time, we'll try to decide what we're going to do next. I kind of wanted to go up here, but now that has me a little bit intrigued. I don't know. Come back next time and find out what we do. As always, I thank you for joining me. I hope you did enjoy this episode. If you did, why don't you let me know by leaving me a like or a comment. If you're not a subscriber, why don't you please consider subscribing. Thank you guys so much for watching. I sure do hope you join me again in the next episode.